All right, so I'm here at Howard University partnering with Young Docs DC. Beautiful day at the beautiful, beautiful Howard University. Woo, let's go. It's time to motivate these young people, these young black men to go to medical school. I'm humbled to be here and uh, can't wait to meet them. Take you guys inside, let's go. Hey, what's up guys? So I just got from the gym and now I'm getting ready to take a shower and just get on this train headed to Washington, D.C. I am so excited to announce our partnership. Dr. McNeely Dream Project is partnering with Young Docs D.C. We are grooming young black males, preparing them for success in college and also to go to medical school. That's right. We're going to fix this shortage ourselves. So I am excited. I'm taking you guys with me. Stay tuned, let's go. Hey guys, I'm headed to the train station. Pray for me. I'm, I'm running a little late. I bought my ticket on my phone, so we are gonna see. Baltimore cold is real, but uh, we ready to go. Young Docs DC, let's go. Man, I'm in my Uber tripping, man. My uh, train leaving like eight minutes. We trying to make it through this traffic. It's a marathon oh, we'll today. Yeah, we'll oh, but we'll be good though. Yeah, once. Y'all pray for me. Yeah. <laughs> man, went with my comfortable shoes today though. I knew I was gonna be running, man. <laughs> now I'm headed to DC. I'm uh, working with uh, Young Doctors DC. So we're uh, training up young black males uh, interested in medicine. So helping with them with their college essays and. Uh, I'm in medical school, I'm gonna be a surgeon, so I'm just trying to show them it's possible. And no matter where you come from, you come from Chicago, DC, Baltimore, you know, just keep going. It's not an easy path, but gotta make a way, man. So that's my whole message. So I'm running down there to do that. We're at uh, Howard University. Oh, Howard University. Yeah, I've been working on this partnership for a long time. So we, they finally accepted me yesterday. So I'm oh, super, I'm pumped oh, up, man. That's sweet. I'm pumped up, man, it's gonna be good. Yeah. Like if you don't see it, you don't, you can't be it. So we got to show the students what they can be so they can see it in high school. Hmm. You got some options, man, you know. Everybody ain't going to the NBA or the NFL. So you got some options. You can be successful outside of sports. So that's what, that's my message, man. Hmm. I'm excited. Sure. I like that. All right, so I'm at uh, Baltimore Penn Station and we made it. The train is 20 minutes late, so it worked out perfect. It's a trip, man, but we're gonna make it. We're here, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. We have arrived, about to catch my lift. Headed to Howard, Young Docs, DC. Let's go. <sighs> Nose been running. Haven't experienced a real fall in 10 years. My God. Getting yeah, headed up to Howard, man. We're doing this Young Docs, DC. Motivating the young uh, black men to go to medical school, man. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go. But you know what? The medical field is. So they require a lot of things, right? Yeah, they do. At least you have to do like seven years or six? Yeah, four years of undergrad and then four years of medical school. Yeah, it's a lot, man. But they can do it. We just got to motivate them. They got options. I want them to at least consider it and let and know that they got the possibility to do it if they, if they so choose to. Also, the, you are a doctor? Yeah, I'm uh, two more years. So I'm in medical school now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm trying to lift as I climb out here, man. <laughs> yeah, I was working a regular job in corporate America, hated it. Trying to do anything I could to get back to school so I could go apply. So I've been on both sides, man. That's why I'm trying to get them in high school now so they'll know. I didn't know any black male doctors, so now I'm trying to make sure I go back and show them what's going on <laughs> we don't quit we can't fail that's 
It's the words I live by, man. Ready or not, here I come. I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna fly down this road, this road called life. Who gonna fly, fly away with me? Oh, it's the hospital right there. I cannot stay with you. No longer a slave for you. No longer a child, no longer a teen. All right, so I'm here at Howard University partnering with Young Docs DC. Beautiful day at the beautiful, beautiful Howard University. Woo, let's go. It's time to motivate these young people, these young black men to go to medical school. I'm humbled to be here and uh, can't wait to meet them. Take you guys inside. Let's go. Young men, how y'all doing? Yeah. Everybody cool? Yeah. Well, my name is Emmanuel McNeely, originally from Chicago, Illinois, best city in the world. Sorry, y'all from where? DC? Yeah. DC? Where, where everybody from? Where's everyone from? Okay. DC? 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 Hey, you from where? Yeah. Maryland? Nice. Okay, yeah, I'm in Baltimore right now. Uh, so, first of all, uh, my name is Emmanuel McNeely. I'm a second, third year medical student. I say second, third because I'm in between going to third year medical school. Uh, you guys are familiar with Dr. Stevens? Uh, I work with him. He, where he trained, my mentor in orthopedic surgery, uh, they trained at the same place, actually. So, uh, long story short, five years ago, I started my own program, uh, going back to schools in Chicago, Illinois. My wife and I started that. Uh, we weren't married at the time, but I went back to the schools, and I saw the young people, and I was like, just because you're from Chicago doesn't mean you can't go out here and do something. Uh, meet my story getting to medical school. I applied to 11 medical schools. I got 11 denial letters. I was I had all my stuff in garbage bags in a garage and I was sleeping on my homeboy in Florida's uh, couch and I said I am not moving back to Chicago. I did not come to Florida to go to school so I'm going to move back to my mom's basement. So I'm trying to make a shake. Y'all know what y'all know make a shake. So I'm trying to make a shake. Uh, I'm uh, whitening teeth up and down the East Coast. I'm, uh, you know, I got short of money. I started doing sports announcing to try to make ends meet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Howard University. And coming up, number seven, Ethan Perla. As well, right, right, right? So I'm trying to make a shake. See, that's love, bro. Appreciate you. So I'm trying to make a shake. That's not like I would make some money. I made $13 an hour. The game is two hours long. $26 ain't cutting it. So I was like, oh man, I'm running out of cash. So I, I did my undergrad degree in Florida, Palm Beach Atlantic. I got a chemistry degree, ran out of money. So teeth whitening, uh, sports announcing. I said, something's got to shake. So I got blessed to start selling cars in South Florida. They took a young black man on a car lot, no sales experience, and I start selling Jaguars. Now it sounds fancy, but this was rough stuff. Uh, people aren't necessarily trying to buy cars from myself at 24 years old at the time. Uh, God blessed me to sell 29 cars in four months. I was able to pay up enough money to get my stuff out the garbage bags, get myself into a master's program at Florida Atlantic University, Biomedical Science. So the second I got enough money to pay for my stuff and move down there, I went to my boss after God blessed me to sell 29 cars, one Aston Martin. It was a real blessing. I told him, I said, I'm leaving today. My man looked at me and said, you're making the biggest mistake of your life. This was the number one ranked Jaguar dealership in North America. He said, you're making the biggest mistake of your life. I said, sir, appreciate your time, I'm leaving. I went from having money back to no cash. I went to Boca Raton, Florida, Florida Atlantic University. I went there, didn't know how I was gonna pay for school. I just had to have faith. Went there, got an apartment. I had a friend, she told the person that I was her brother, you know, brother, sister. They didn't check my credit, got blessed with an apartment. I started working as a teacher assistant. I was teaching biology. Applied to 11 medical schools, 11 denial letters. Spent $1,100 of my own money, not an interview, nothing. I said, God, I don't know what's happening right now. I left this good job, I'm from Chicago, I'm not moving back to my mom's basement, what's happening? I took my medical college admissions test again. I took that test so many times people were laughing at me. They said, I can't believe you're taking that test again. I took it again and I applied to schools again. I had medical doctors look me in the face and say, I'm looking at your numbers. You'll never make it to medical school. What are you doing? 
What are you doing? Why are you trying to apply to medical school? I had doctors look me in the face and say, you're not gonna make it. I applied, took all my money, put it in there. God blessed me with three interviews, three medical school acceptances, and a scholarship at the school I ended up going to. Not because anything about me, you heard my stuff in trash bags. You heard me from Chicago trying not to live on a couch, stuff in garbage bags. God blessed me to finally get into medical school and I was blessed with a scholarship to go. In medical school, I have people who aren't very excited to see an African-American male in there. Can you imagine? I walk in the hospital, I am the only person that looks like me in a mile. People are not excited to see you. I've heard everything you can imagine from teachers. Emmanuel, how do you think you measure up with your classmates? How we're concerned about you. Didn't fail any tests. Um, uh, we think you're going to have to do extra work and work out some extra things. Uh, some teachers are concerned about your progress. What are, you, what are you talking about? I passed all my classes. I didn't fail anything. Yeah, but you're going to have to come in. I had to get to school an hour early to present my work to a teacher before I could go to class and sit at a table with other people who didn't look like me. How does that sound to y'all? Come to school an hour early, present to me so you can go into class with the other students and I'm going to filter your work to see if you're good enough. It's not right. I'm the first black man to graduate in my family, go to college, first doctor on either side. My wife is in medical school. She got blessed to go to my same medical school. She's there right now. Black man, black woman in a medical school. It ain't fair, is it? It's not right, is it? They don't have anything on you, young docs. Does that mean that everybody's gonna be happy for you? No, you guys got big dreams in here? I know you do. You think everybody's gonna say, yeah! Welcome, black man. Come on in. You're going to make it. No. What are you going to do when they look at you and bring you to the back and you feel isolated? They look at you. 5,000 people applied for 64 seats in medical school. You have one. We're concerned about you. You say, but hey, 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 I've been working. I'm 29 years old. I've been grinding. You heard a little bit of the story. You're still looking at me. Ah, we're worried about you. Another doctor, uh, Emmanuel, come on, choose something else. Another, uh, another teacher, come on, you need a backup plan. You know what backup plan says? No. You dreaming too big. I don't think you can do what you say you can do. Come up with something else that I approve of for your life. How crazy is that? You can't handle Young Docs DC. You can't handle going to be a surgeon. Choose something else. I have doctors telling me that. What are you gonna do? Quit? No. What you gonna do? Oh man, they bogus, they racist. No. They go low, what do we do? We go high. Guess what they can't do? They can't take that piece of paper away from you though. No. I took my boards, it said pass on there, glory to God. Can't take that away. No. I'm writing papers right now. Somebody brought up depression and anxiety. I'm writing papers right now. I'm presenting, God blessed to present my research next month. Depression and anxiety, how it affects patient perception of their care. When that thing gets produced, it says Manuel McNeely, you can take that away from me. Young men, that's what you need. You need to get a piece of paper that someone can't take away from you. We're talking about police brutality. It sucks. It's crazy. I've been profiled. I was taking my medical college admissions test. I had a hoodie on. I was driving to get something to eat. It was 1030. Left the medical school. I got pulled over. <clears throat> Jesus, help me. I'm in Boca Raton, Florida. Fancy spot. Cop pull up. Whoop, whoop. My man come hand right here. Don't move. I said, I see my man. I got all my registrations, everything on the paper. I'm shaking. I'm from Chicago, y'all. I know people that got beat down. I was in Chicago with my brother in the Crown Victoria. We moved to a new neighborhood. He rolled the window down. Bro. They stick a breathalyzer down his throat. Almost choked the man. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. I've seen police brutality. I've been a part. I'm studying for my medical college admissions test. Soaring in life. Y'all heard my story. I said, ooh, I'm here. Come on, come on. My man's scared. I'm scared. What are we going to do to change it? We're going to complain about it? They go low. What do we do? Gentlemen, I'm not here to get you pumped up. I'm here to show you that real. 
you guys are gonna produce. You're gonna to go to college, you're gonna get scholarships, you're gonna do well, you're gonna be go to your job, you're gonna go on your internships and you'll be the best person there. If you're not 10 times better, oh, we don't know him. But guess what, they can talk all they want. The results, the results. Gentlemen, you will not quit, you will not slow down, you will not stop. People will say you can't do things. I'm here for you. Dr. Stevens is here for you. Everybody's here for you. You are blessed. You are chosen for a reason. God didn't bring you this far so you can stop. I ain't even no preacher. But real talk. God brought me here for y'all. He brought me here to work with y'all. We're going to work on these essays. We're going to work on these scholarships. We're going to go to AAMC. We're going to kill it. And we ain't going to stop. We always going to strive to go higher and higher. The world is waiting for us. My bad. The world waiting for us. Y'all ready? Let's clap it up. I'm Emmanuel. I'm here with y'all. I'm in Baltimore. I took a train and an Uber because I love y'all. Let's eat. Let's go. We're going to get the bag. Let's screw the bag, y'all. Let's break bread. Break bread, man. Y'all y'all ain't sure. No, no breakfast with me. Let's go. Let's go. I'm a little hungry, but we straight. <laughs> nah, that's love, y'all. And what's your name, man? I'm Jalen. I'm Jalen, you know what I'm saying? Jalen. Jalen in chemistry right now. Jalen gonna we gonna sauce it up for y'all. Yeah, we, we gonna we gonna do big things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's love. That's love. You already know, you already know. Hey, got my homeboy right here. So, what's your name, man? You gotta tell everybody where you're from. You're on YouTube. What you, what you gonna be when you grow up? Just trying to make it through medical school, get to college. Oh, what kind of doctor you gonna be? I'm gonna be an anesthesia. Hey, shake it up with me, then. Hey, all right. So, an anesthesia. So, when I'm doing a surgery, I look over to you. You put the patient to sleep. You keep him asleep until it's time for him to wake up. Hey, let's see, let's see. So, he's a senior, and uh, my main man. Where's your focus? What's your what's your what's your focus? Oh, I'm, I'm political science slash free dental slash photographer. Yeah. Yo, and his his college app is fire. It's fire. Yeah. Hey, that's love. That's love. And then that's my man. I'm a student. I'm a senior. I got a full beard. I'm a, I got I got to cut it off. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. So we can secure the bag. That's my brother Ume. With the Young Docs, man, Young Docs DC. Let's go. Dr. Larry right here. No, no, we are sitting with Dr. McNeely. Yeah, preparing the dissertation. So, Dr. Larry, what do you do, man? What do you do, man? I am a fourth year clinical psychology PhD student, minoring in neuropsychology here at Howard University. Here at the Howard University. The Howard University. Yes, and, and he's schooling me in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And where, where'd you come from? What the sweater is that? Yeah, with these MDs right here. The psychologists with the MDs. The surgeons, the internists. Best. Hey, let's go. No, and I'm super happy to be collaborating with these guys, Young Docs DC, making it happen. All these oh, future do. leaders back here, so. These brothers. These brothers, man. Yeah, what? Anesthesiologist. All right, so when I'm doing the surgery, what you gonna do? I'm gonna put them to sleep. Make sure you make sure sleep. But you gotta make sure they wake up, though. Make sure they wake up, too. I'm yeah, make sure they wake up, man. Yeah, I saw one of the patients start waking up in the middle of surgery, man. They had up the doses, man. Make sure you keep them asleep until it's time to wake them up. There we go. There we go. That's love. Hey, what up? What's up? What's up, man? Yeah, Follow sure. us, man. We out here. We out here. We out here. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Everything is the same. Everything is.